Thank you so much for allowing Teresa and I, my wife and I, to be here this morning. We're glad to be here. And uh, God has truly blessed me because of the fruit of your work and your ministry. I want to read a verse before I begin with my testimony. And this is uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. The Bible says, Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of, of God. And I was in those categories. I was in one of those categories as a, a alcoholic and a drunkard. And I had a life of alcoholism that started by the time I was in my late teens, around 17 and 18. I was drinking very heavy. And then by the time I uh, graduated high school, I began to seek a uh, career and, and did real well in my career. However, my life was falling apart by the day because I was lost and I needed Jesus. And so I went to work for a mechanical contractor in my 20s and worked for them for quite a few years out of Colorado Springs. Worked in Kansas, worked in Dalhart, worked in Amarillo, worked in Bonham, Texas. And the Lord began to draw and convict me in, the, uh, in a Bonham, Texas job, si job site. I decided to quit my job, moved back to Tyler to try to get around Christians, thinking that's what I needed to do. And so I moved back to Tyler, Texas. And uh, the next thing I know, I'm building fence, getting ready to buy cows, and still the same old person, drinking and uh, uh, partying. Uh, had a, a horrible mouth. My life was falling apart. There were times during that period that I was suicidal, just a, a life completely in shambles, and I didn't know what to do. I was lost, and I was looking for help, looking for hope. And so about six months later, I went to work for a family business, and the next thing you know, I'm in Corsicana, Texas. Matter of fact, this Bible that I'm reading from this morning is, uh, was given to me. It's a Gideon Bible given to me by the camp in Corsicana, Texas, and I am very thankful for that and for James Potter, uh, Brother James Potter, for introducing me uh, to that camp. And so I was one of those guys in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. However, one night in a hotel room, we stayed in a hotel three nights a week during that project, and one night I was uh, fixing to go to the hotel bar to get another drink, and I grabbed the uh, doorknob to go out, and I couldn't let go of that doorknob. As I was holding that doorknob, it was like the Lord was saying, if you let go of this doorknob, you'll have a, never have another chance. That's what I felt in my heart. And so I was in a spiritual warfare between exiting and going out that door and what God uh, was doing for me in the room. And so I started thinking, how can I seek the Lord? How can I know where he's at? What do I do? And I remembered that Gideon Bible was in the drawer there. And so I went over there and pulled that Gideon Bible out. And I didn't know what I was looking at. But I felt the presence of God in that room when I opened that Gideon Bible. I felt that God loved me. I felt a love that I cannot put into words. It was a love that was indescribable. And I felt the presence of the Lord Jesus in the room. And I didn't know how to come to Jesus. I didn't have any idea, but I was reading in the book of John, and I felt the Lord speaking to me from the book of John. And it was like, I know that whatever this book says, the truth is in it, and I need to find out how to allow that truth to change my life and to come into my heart, and I, I longed for salvation. There was a lot of people, and there is a lot of people just like me out there right now looking for hope. And what you do gives them that intersecting opportunity. And so what I did is I began to read. And as I was reading, my heart was being drawn. I was being wooed of the Holy Spirit. And I didn't know quite what to do. I didn't know that I could go back to the back of the Bible and there was going to be something to help explain it. Or I could have gone to the front and found it. I didn't know at the time. So I turned the TV on hoping somebody would be talking about the Lord on TV, maybe a Billy Graham crusade. So I began to flip through the channels. And there was a man from San Antonio, John Hagee, that was preaching a sermon on salvation through Jesus Christ on the seven I.M.s of John. 
And when he quoted John 14, 6, I'm in the same place in the Gideon Bible. And I thought, how in the world did that guy know that I didn't know how the Lord worked at that time and age of my life. And I thought, how did that guy know that we were in the same place in the Bible? And so he quoted that and he talked about Jesus and I looked down and the Holy Spirit opened my eyes on John 14, 6 that I needed to receive Jesus Christ. And so I didn't wait for the invitation on TV. I just got on my knees because I felt the Lord calling my name, not audibly, but saying, just come to me, just come to me. And I surrendered my life right there to Jesus Christ on that floor. And I mean, I bawled like a baby. (laughs) And I truly believe that had he not saved me at that time, I, I really don't think that I would be here today. I really don't. That's how messed up my life was. And I was so excited. And after I got through crying and I felt a burden of sin roll away, I knew, and I had been in the hospital at one time to try to defeat the alcoholism and it didn't work. And a year later, I was right back in it and every day was so difficult for me. And I know that that's, it, it's all a sin. I was a sinner and it's all of sin. I was a sinner. I was lost and I needed a savior. And so an intersecting point happened for me. I was in verse 10 as one of the drunkards and all those other categories as well. All of those things. But because of the Gideon's work and that Bible in that drawer, I became a verse 11, the next verse. And such were some of you, past tense. And such were some of you, and ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's salvation and how it takes place from the Word of God. And that's exactly what happened. So I left the room and I went to the hotel bar. Now follow me right here. (laughs) I went to the hotel bar and I told the lady she knew me well. And I said, ma'am, make a pot of coffee. Because I'm going back to the room and I'm going to be in there all night reading the Gideon Bible. And that Gideon Bible became my first Bible as a new Christian. And I felt guilty because I marked it up. I did all kinds of things with that Gideon Bible. And I would hide it and I would request that I get the same room every week because I didn't want to lose my Bible. And so you never know the work that you do and the impact that it will have because when you walk out of the room, the Holy Spirit walks in the room with the people that are in there with that Bible there. All I needed to know was that the Bible was in that drawer and the Holy Spirit says you got to get that book and you got to open it up. And so I opened it up. Well, the next day I'm a brand new Christian and I don't know what to do other than tell people I'm a new Christian. So the next day I found a Christian bookstore in Corsicana And I bought a bunch of New Testaments. And so I'm on the construction site the next day, handing them out. And I'm going up to people and saying, Hey, Jesus saved me last night, and he'll save you today as well, just as he saved me last night, if you're willing to believe. And I walked up to this one man, and he was pretty intimidating and uh, kind of scary. And I handed him a Bible, and I said, Look, I got saved last night. I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. And he saved me last night. And I want to give you one of these Bibles. And you can meet Jesus too. And I handed it to him. And he handed it right back to me. And he says, I'm sorry. He said, I'm an agnostic. I can't take that. Well, I didn't know what an agnostic was. (laughs) I, I said, listen. It doesn't matter if you're agnostic, Baptist, Assembly of God, Church of Christ. It don't matter what you are. Jesus Christ to save you too today. And I handed it right back to him. And he took the Bible. And we began to build a relationship after that. And I pray he's saved today. I don't know. But what God has done in my life because of what you did in your life through the Gideons has changed who I am. I am a different person today because of that intersection of time that God had in his mind before the foundation of the world. The Bible says we've been created for good works. And y'all did a good work, and it paid off. I thank you for what you do.
keep on serving the Lord and do it with all of your heart in what you do for the Gideons because people like me can now say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you've done for me.